Okay, I wanted to just do a quick video uh, discussing the idle kind of adjustment trim screw here on the AFM, the air flow meter for the 22RE. Now, uh, a couple things to note, there's two versions of this airflow meter out there. One of them has an, a, a screw which you can adjust. Uh, the second one has a, is a sealed unit where the ECU of the, of the truck uh, handles the adjustment. So this video pertains mostly to the version where you have the screw here. Now, in my particular case, I, as I mentioned in some of the other videos, I messed up my original unit and I had to buy one from Napa. Uh, so this is a remanufactured one, but it, it's been functioning as fine as long as I've had the truck. Um, uh, and I'll show some of the numbers here for anyone who's interested. Uh, on the on the unit itself, now mine's been, you can tell mine's been glass beaded, but on the factory units, if you look very closely here at this location, I believe it is, oh sorry, at, at this location, and I think you can kind of see the remnants of my original uh, number down there, uh, the number six, Toyota stamps a number on the unit, and I believe that's the original number, uh, which relates to the adjustment of this screw as it left the factory. Now, I'll put a link in the description of this video to what's known as the TCCS manual. And uh, that stands for Toyota Computer Control System, I believe. There's a, a PDF version of that. Um, it's not only for the 22RE, but it, it covers mostly what's going on with the, the uh, airflow meter, uh, the throttle position switch over there, and uh, kind of gives you a, an overview of how the fuel injection system is working. And it has some kind of interesting stuff related to the, the airflow meter. Now, it, you might be here at this video because you've lost control of the adjustment. So I wanted to make a couple uh, points here. The first thing is that if you pop this lid off, there's, and I, as I've shown in some other videos, and you've probably seen here, there's a little wheel in here, and it's a spring system. Um, and it puts tension on the little door that opens in here. Uh, well, I guess it opens out. Uh, that opens in here, and I have other videos that shows this open, If you, and I'll put links to those in the description, but uh, there's basically a little door in here that, that is pulled open as air flows into the engine. So as the engine cranks over or is running, it's drawing air in, creating a vacuum, so forth, and, and the air has to come in here, go through the air filter, and head this way, and the electronics in here uh, tell the computer roughly the volume of air uh, being drawn through this this metering system. Now, this is a more or less of a bypass uh, channel, and if you turn this screw all the way clockwise in, it will seat and and block that channel. And what that means is that the vo all the air suction going through is being applied to the door and causing it to open. Now, if you back that screw up, it's opening a secondary channel, which allows some of the air to enter and not have an impact on that door. So as you turn the idle adjustment, or, you know, it's not really an idle adjustment screw like uh, this guy. It's, it's kind of an, a trim screw for the airflow meter. So, um, as you turn this screw counterclockwise, it is creating a secondary passage to allow air to fill that vacuum uh, from the motor. And what that's doing, in effect, is giving another channel and reducing the amount of air going past the door. So what you're doing is you're tricking the door into closing a little bit or, or opening more based on this adjustment. Now, 
if you run this screw all the way down and then put a depth uh, uh, like a veneer caliper, the depth uh, part in and measure the distance from this little top rim down to the face of that slotted screw, uh, you should get around 15 millimeters. And if you look in that Toyota computer control manual, uh, you will see that they reference the number stamped on the housing. And if you have a, a, an un kind of modified uh, original Toyota airflow meter and you clean, clean off that housing and you find the number, it will tell you uh, the depth of this screw when Toyota adjusted the electronics and airflow as the truck left the factory. So it's the kind of the default factory setting. And the way that number works, let's say for example your number was 26. <clears throat> so what that number is, is it's, it's telling you the depth from the, the edge of this uh, housing down to the screw, but you got to add 10 millimeters. So if the number is 12, for example, what Toyota is indicating is 10 millimeters plus 2.6 millimeters. And that's telling you that when Toyota adjusted this screw from the factory to make sure that the voltage levels reading the proper airflow for the computer, this screw was 12.6 millimeters from its face to the edge of this housing. So if you've been screwing around with, with this and you don't know where you're at and you, and you can't figure out like, oh, you know, what should the right amount of turns be? And it's very difficult because once you get uh, out of the original setting or you need to make fine tuning or you start messing around, you don't fully understand what this was and you start making a lot of adjustments it can be really hard to get back to the kind of where you were setting by trying to you know observe how the truck runs and the reason for that is because you're the computer in the car the ECU it's constantly making kind of on the fly adjustments in an effort to get the air fuel ratio so it you you kind of have thrown it off into nowhere land if you make if you if you change the adjustment and but then it's always trying to get back out of nowhere land and and you're kind of both like where are we you know but what you can kind of do is you can kind of get back in the ballpark um so as i mentioned when you run this screw down it should be about 15 millimeters uh once, once you you bottom that out so if you if you turn that clockwise until it stops turning uh, measure it, but at least, at least on mine is 15 millimeters. The thread pitch on this screw is 1.0 uh, millimeters. So what that means is each revolution is raising or lowering the height of the screw by exactly one millimeter by virtue of the thread pitch. So, you know, in my case, if I dial it all the way down, it's uh, 15 millimeters. Each time I turn it one rev revolution counterclockwise, I'm, I'm raising it one millimeter. So two turns will bring it from 15 millimeters up to 13 millimeters. I currently have it set at two and a half turns, which is 2.5 millimeters from the original 15 millimeter setting. And I think 12.5 five millimeters is probably a fairly good kind of starting point if you're trying to get back you know into where does uh, the computer and the car want you know us to be so if you've been messing around and you need to get that back into the zone then that's a good starting point point. and what you can kind of think in terms of that number that toyota stamps on the on the the housing and if you have the number, let's say you have 3.1, for example, then that would mean that they want you to start kind of the, the depth at 13.1 millimeters. But you got to figure that in the, in the TCCS manual, they give an example, I believe it is, of 
2.6 or, or 26 on the housing. So you got to kind of figure that's probably more plus or minus where Toyota is, you know, kind of thinking. And that equates to about a 12 and a half millimeter depth. So if you have a caliper uh, or some means to measure that accurately, I say a depth of 12.5 millimeters from that little upper ledge to the screw is probably a fair starting point and each half rotation is going to bring you up or down half a millimeter so that will kind of give you a little bit to work with if you're if you've gotten out of adjustment there or if you're just kind of curious like you know what is that doing like i say it's think you can think of it as kind of a, a trim screw adjusting feature for that door which is uh, sort of similar to changing the tension on the spring but more fine grain so if you're messing around with the spring in here a couple clicks either way and then you're like ah, i wish it was not i wish it was halfway in between one of those clicks that's what you want to mess with because you can adjust kind of the uh, vacuum level on the door and so between changing the spring clicks in here and giving uh, the door a little bit of help with air you know escaping around it that will cause the door to not have as much air and it'll cause it to kind of go in there so think of the spring as your kind of granular adjustment and then think of this as your fine grain adjustment but they're both basically doing the same thing they're kind of tricking the ECU into like how much air are we seeing and that uh, translates into one of the attributes that the computer is utilizing to figure out the, the, the duration to pump your fuel injectors or the, or the pulse width of the fuel injectors. And that has a direct impact under uh, as far as your air fuel ratio goes. So. Anyways, just want to put that out there. Uh, it, it can kind of sometimes be a little confusing to understand what's going on here, especially when it comes to this silly little screw and like what, you know, especially if you get out of whack, like where am I, you know? So 12 and a half millimeters, probably a fair starting point. And then from there, it's kind of just a matter of adjusting based on the overall operation of the vehicle and how does the truck uh, idle when we come to a stop. So, all right, well, uh, I'll put those links to some of the pertinent information I mentioned in the description. If you have any questions specific, I'll do my best to answer them in the comments. And uh, thanks as always for watching.